In light of the recent news of layoffs that are going on at big tech companies, Facebook laying off another 11,000 people, bringing their total to 21,000 people that have been laid off, I wanted to talk about the dirty jobs that no one really knows about, no one really cares about, but it's come to my attention actually because I watched a documentary on Netflix last night. And the documentary had to do with the adult film industry and content moderation within the adult film industry. It's actually a really good uh, documentary that's up on Netflix that just came out yesterday. And I usually don't watch stuff on Netflix. I'm not a big Netflix guy. I just opened it up before I was going to sleep. I was like, hey, let's see what's on. And this documentary immediately caught my attention because I was interested in not only the business of, or the, uh, like the economics of the adult film industry, but I was also interested in kind of the scandal that has been happening in the adult film industry with one of the biggest companies in the world. I'm not going to say their name because I don't know if YouTube likes saying the P word on, on videos. Um, and sort of some of the internal problems they've been dealing with over the past couple of years. And while I was watching that documentary, I realized that there is a big issue that we don't talk about when it comes to jobs, even though we're having all these layoffs. And one of that is digital content moderation. You've got these big, gigantic platforms like Facebook, 3 billion users, YouTube, 2.3 billion users. Um, yeah, you've got Snapchat, you've got uh, TikTok. All these platforms have hundreds of millions of pieces of user-generated content uploaded a day. Now, why is that important? That means they don't have to buy any content. Netflix, Spotify, they have to buy all this content and they have to absorb those costs and they hope people will like them on algorithmically suggestion platforms like Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. People upload, you don't have any content costs. All you have is a cost of figuring out how to create an algorithm to curate that content. Well, if people upload a lot of stuff, then you're going to get a lot of crazy stuff. There are more than 15,000 moderators at Facebook and most are contracted through third-party firms. Uh, Facebook apparently pay, uh, paid um, uh, Accenture $500 million last year to be able to help them with content moderation. The digital content moderation industry is expected to grow to be $13 billion by 2027 with a CAGR of about 10% during 2021 to 2027. So this is an industry that's worth about $13 billion and it's growing relatively well every single year because there's more content that's being created. YouTube has expanded its global workforce to about 10,000 and Twitter has about 1,500 moderators. Even though on Twitter, the stuff that I'm seeing nowadays that are showing up in my feed, I love the free speech of it, uh, portion of Twitter now more than ever uh but i'm literally seeing people get shot in the face on on twitter i mean like stuff is popping up because i think they've kind of chained how they moderate to be more inclusive of free speech which i get but there's some stuff that you probably don't want to see uh a facebook content moderator can review between 700 and 2000 posts a day on facebook alone more than 3 million items are reported on a daily basis by ai systems and 95 percent of that content is, is is taken out by AI, but you've still got 5%, which are massive levels of pieces of content of figuring out what to do with it. And it comes through Facebook or, and it comes through these moderators. Now, this was really interesting to me. The content moderating job takes a serious toll on moderators mental health, ranging from anxiety to PTSD. And as a result, Facebook recently paid a $52 million settlement covering 11,000 moderators who suffered from PTSD on the job. And that's when I found this article, The Secret Life of Facebook moderators in America. And I believe this has to do with people that live um, in Arizona, if I'm not incorrect, but that is uh, that is where this was taking place. So Chloe is one of the moderators. She has to moderate a Facebook post in front of her fellow trainees because she's training them. And the video depicts a man being murdered. Someone is stabbing him dozens of times while he screams and begs for his life. Chloe's job is to tell the room whether this post should be removed. She knows that Section 13 of the Facebook Community Standards prohibits vi videos that depict the murder of one or more people. While Chloe, when Chloe explains to the class, she hears her voice shaking. Returning to her seat, Chloe feels an overwhelming ur urge to sob. Another trainee has gone up to review the next post, but Chloe, Chloe cannot concentrate. She leaves the room and begins to cry so hard she has trouble breathing. No one tries to comfort her. This is the job she was hired to do. And of for the thousand people like Chloe moderating content for Facebook at the Phoenix site in Arizona and for 15,000 content moderators around the world, this is just another day in the office. And this is also why Facebook ultimately had to pay a $52 million lawsuit to settle because Facebook did not realize the mental health implications this was having on someone, which makes sense if you see someone, you know, get killed or, you know, the, the sexual stuff every single day, 700 times to 2000 times a day. I mean, you would start to, <laughs> you'd start to have some mental health issues. These people are paid about $28,000 and $28,800 per year on average. Uh, now, the typical Facebook employee makes $240,000. And so this was just an interesting thing to me because you've got these tech workers, product managers that are advancing the product, making sure the product grows, making sure more people use it, blah, 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 getting paid $240,000 a year. And you've got people making sure the product is usable because if you see someone getting killed in your feed, 
you're probably not going to want to come back to that feed. You're not going to want to use that product. These are the people that to me are doing, one could argue, a more important job than the tech workers. I mean, <laughs> now I know like from a business sense, yes, the tech workers are doing a more important job, but like if the platform is not usable, it's not usable. They're only getting paid $30,000 a year. So it's interesting to me. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is because the question is, are Facebook getting rid of these types of people? Because if they are or, or, or Google or YouTube, right? All these layoffs that are happening. Google recently laid off 10,000 people. If moderators are starting to go from the workforce, then I think these platforms are going to be very interesting in terms of type, what types of content pops up in your feed. The reason I'm so, so obsessed with this is because I'm building a startup, Audia.io. It's an audio-based startup. And we have had some content moderation issues, but we're not big enough yet to be to the point where like, oh my goodness, this has to be taken down. Like, like this is the most you know horrible thing someone could upload to the platform. We do have the benefit of being audio, so it makes it a little bit easier versus if it was video. But nonetheless, I mean, you give a platform to the world, the world discovers that platform exists. One of the you know cruel parts of humanity that I've been able to realize is that everyone everyone is like, like they're going to, if they get a whim of the platform, they're going to think the platform is an opportunity to get their agenda and their message across. And there are a lot of weird people in the world and hateful people in the world. And they will post anything on that platform because they do not care. I mean, could you imagine not only killing someone, stabbing them, but then recording that and uploading that for public consumption? I mean, that's insane. But like, th th like it, it surprises me every day because I remember there's 5 billion people using the internet. And when you got 5 billion of humanity's issues and problems all in this one place, all on these different centralized little websites, you're going to get a lot of crazy stuff. And so content moderation is going to be a big deal over the next 10 years. The industry is going to expand. But my curiosity always lies in how an algorithm can curate that content. But if moderators still need to be there to be able to make sure that an algorithm, what it misses, which YouTube gets 500 hours of video uploaded a minute, and that's a 2019 stat, I'm sure it's more like six, 700 hours of video uploaded a minute, there's going to be some stuff that the platform misses. And if the platform misses that stuff, then you know, ultimately it comes on the moderator to figure that out. These are the dirty jobs of big tech that no one wants to talk about. And I just, you know, discovering these articles last night, I was really interested and I wanted to kind of give my take on the fact that not only should these people be paid more, but these people probably shouldn't lose their job because if the platform becomes unusable, there's only so much AI that can actually detect really violent, horrible stuff. Sometimes you do need a human watching that. And just like the mental health of someone living their life every day, seeing this type of stuff was also interesting to me because I'm like, I don't know if I could go every single day seeing horrible stuff no, I'm not getting paid that much for it. And then go back to sleep like nothing happened. Like that's, that, that's a hard day. I mean, people get upset over seeing one bad news article. Imagine seeing some of the stuff that content moderators are seeing. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Would you ever want a job as a content moderator? Do you think you could handle it? And do you think if the pay was better, you would actually apply for it because it's a easy job to decide if this is good or if this is bad, but is it worth the mental health implications? We'd love to know. Thank you guys so much for listening, watching. I'll see you in the next one.